Hello, my name is Walter Rustler and I'm Director of Sales and Customer Support with Global Software. Today we talk about special features to be more competitive with RFM. We will learn about modeling techniques, load generation, analysis troubleshooting and we'll see other useful features. This webinar will be recorded and put on our website for a later review. Some examples uh, that I show today were prepared before and I do not show all detail from the very beginning. To get started with RFM, please take a look at our previous webinars or go through the introductory examples that we'll point out at the end of this webinar. With the following uh, examples, I want to show a small selection of the special features inside RFM. Uh, I think those features are outstanding and can increase your product productivity enormously. We will go through those simple examples and show you how quickly we can model and get to good results inside uh, RFM. Not all features um, can be covered today. I only picked out a few of them. Uh, we will have time in later webinars to show you more of the uh, features. Before we start to work with the software itself, I'd like to point out that you have an option to ask questions in the questions um, box that you have on your control panel of the webinar software. Um, my colleague Frank, Fa Frank Sontag, he will help me today to answer the questions. Please keep the questions short so he can answer them briefly in the text box. And uh, if it should happen that there are so many questions we can't answer them during the webinar, please be patient. We will follow up on it uh, after the webinar. Now I'd like to go into the live uh, demonstration and I will switch into the RFM uh, software. The first example is a simple frame um, and it has a it's, it's a beam model. It has basically um, only uh, the information of the beginning and ending of the member and the cross section. It has a few load cases here, uh, live load, wind load, and a few combinations. And uh, at the end, we'll get a ultimate limit uh, situation uh, result. And we can, for example, see the um, internal forces. And at the end, I performed a stress analysis with RF steel uh, members. This result, indicates a stress, a location here, a, 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 a area here of this beam where we have a overstress. I can show this here a little bit more in detail with colors. And this area, uh, now we have the option to, to uh, increase the cross-section entirely of the of the uh, beam here, or we can take a closer look to this um, connection here. And I'd like to do this now uh, with, uh, by means of generating surfaces from this 1D beam uh, model that we have here. So basically we going over from a, from a 1D beam element into a 2D surface uh, finite element uh, solution. And the focus will be on how to connect the 1D beam element with the 2D surfaces and how to perform the detailed uh, analysis here. When we take a look at it here, uh, this 1D element is now here only a visualization, but in reality it's only basically a line and the beam element doesn't know anything about the details of this connection, but within the surface element we can do this uh, much better. 
So how to do this? Um, first of all, I have to kind of isolate this uh, section here where there is the um, connection. Uh, inside RFM, I have the option to select uh, a member and then if you don't know what command you have available, it's always a good idea to use the right mouse key on the selection. Then uh, we will uh, uh, divide the member uh, at a certain distance. Please note, then while, while I'm doing this, I see the direction of the member in the background of the selected member and I can see here at the member end, which is this area here, I want to have a intersection at 0.5 meters. A new node is introduced and it's automatically connected and when I take a look at the loading situation, all the loads are changed automatically and updated, so it's also on this new member. I can do the same thing again on the right side. This time I only have to hit the return key and it will automatically call the last command. And one more time here for the column and I get here as well the new member. Here we see now the um, new uh, members that have been created by this division process and I'm selecting it and I just want to have an isolated view so I can create a visibility by selected objects. Everything else is in the background and I cannot touch it or change it. In order to create a surface model from these 1D finite element members, I can use the uh, command again, as I said before, right mouse click, member, generate surfaces from member. And this is a unique feature in RFEM that takes the information from the cross section on a 1D member and creates automatically a 2D surface uh, model from it. So I don't have to read all the coordinates and the thicknesses of the blades from the database. It's everything is automatically done here and it's created automatically for you. This saves you a lot of time in just getting the information about the coordinates of these nodes and uh, instead of modeling it manually, you can just use this very useful um, command. Now, uh, I have the surface model and I also see here the details of this connection where we have, for example, the flanges that kind of interfere here with the uh, uh, top beam. So how to solve it? How to modify it? Well, um, I go to the wire mode in the rendering mode and I select here those nodes. First of all, I want to uh, end the flanges of the column at the bottom flange of the beam. So uh, I select the nodes and I say here, please move and copy um, or just move the nodes. Typically, I don't know the distance between here and here, but simply I can grab it from the model. I just click on the two nodes and I get the displacement vector. I can set to zero the dx vector and only use the dc uh, distance. On OK, everything is moved on the same uh, level as the bottom flange. So if I check this, I have here C minus 3.910 and here is also minus 3.910. Automatically, RFM realizes that there is here a node in the same plane and will automatically mesh it. Okay, the next thing I have to solve is I have to Think about how I can connect the 1D member with the new 2D surfaces. Typically, it's just on one node here, but it's not so good because it will create a singular effect and a little bit better solution is if we could uh, have here a rigid end plate that would um, transfer the forces more smoothly into the flange and into the web. So how to do this? I simply create here a new surface by polygon 
polygon means, I have to select the boundary nodes. From the surface types, I pick rigid, which is an automatic rigid plate. Um, and on OK, I then can select all the boundary nodes that I need to describe this rigid surface. Once it finds an enclosed loop, it will create the rigid surface. I do the same thing on this end. And one more time here at the bottom. You can see a surface is marked by a dashed line inside the area. You can switch from the wire model to the solid model, where you can switch to the solid transparent display model. The transparent display model has the advantage I can see through and I can grab through, um, for example, this web here, which I cannot do if I have the solid model. I can. It's done that the nodes are drawn in foreground, but basically I cannot see everything in the background. So sometimes it's better to work with the transparent model, or sometimes it's also better to work with the even wireframe model. So Everything is at your fingertips and you can change it as you like. Okay, uh, I go back and I cancel my visibility mode. Can change to the full uh, model and I see here we have the same geometry that's just going straight over uh, to the surface model. By default, we displaying the surfaces only at the center plane. We don't show any thickness. If you want to show the thickness of the plates, you go to the display navigator and you go here and you say rendering model. Um, we can go here to surfaces and we say field inclusive thickness. And then we see also the thicknesses or we can have even a, a wire frame around the edges and you see we exactly match the thicknesses of the original uh, cross-section. Okay, um, now we are basically done with transition from a 1D element to a 2D surface element. What we have to think about is maybe is how do I mesh uh, these surfaces. At calculate FE mesh settings you can set the target length of the finite elements, which is set here to uh, 25 millimeters. We have also options here for um, mesh refinements, but in general, you don't really have to change anything here. The most important setting is here, the target length. I can regenerate the mesh uh, on OK. If I do so, a mesh is created. And we see now here a nice mesh which, have, which has rectangular surfaces. Um, and uh, it also has a relatively um, suitable density, so there are several mesh um, cells along uh, the flange, for example. Okay, with this we can try to run the analysis. Uh, I display the results and Orfem asked me should I calculate and I say yes. And after a few seconds I see my results here. I see my bending moment. I see in the result navigator here, bending moment, axial force, uh, shear force, and so on. Um, I can change the display of the um, diagram uh, in the display uh, tree here. And I navigate to results and I can say two colored, which is basically the default what we have. And also I have options for surfaces. At this moment, we have no more uh, moment diagrams uh, as we have for beams. So it's a little bit more complex to analyze the results. We see here there is a um, patchwork basically display of, of the results. Which results are we seeing? It's uh, MX, so it's the uh, surface inter uh, internal force bending moment mx my and so on and you can switch here 
uh, you can also display the stresses, equivalent stress, and so on. So why we have here this rough patchwork display? Um, actually, this is not default. It's from a previous um, setting I made when I was preparing this model. Default would be continuous with in surface. So let me explain that briefly to you. Um, once we have a surface model, uh, we uh, have um, an algorithm that smooths the pretty rough results on each finite element mesh node. So each mesh node here on each corner of the mesh um, of the finite element has an individual value. We also are able to grab the results on any location along a surface. So we're doing you know, interpolation. Um, and this interpolation is continuous within surfaces. So when there is a boundary line of a surface, we will not uh, average the uh, results from one surface to the other one. It is important to know this, for example, if you have a, a difference in thickness of the surface and you have a stress on one side and a stress on the other side, you cannot just uh, average out and uh, the stresses. So there has to be a small discontinuity in, in the stresses. So uh, therefore we cannot just smooth everything and, and kind of make uh, average values from surface to surface. So we have to control this how we do it. And there are several options. Um, I'll come back to constant on elements later because uh, we'll have to do a plastic design and there will be some differences. Okay, let's see the result of the ultimate limit state uh, combination. When I run the analysis here, I get the local stresses on each finite element, but this time it takes into account um, the local condition here. There's a lot of pressure, tension maybe, and the force is concentrated here at the point where we um, connect to the web. We see here there's an equivalent stress. I can go again to the stress results here. I can look at uh, sigma x, sigma y. I can also look at the membrane stresses, for example. So we see there's tension on the top and then there is compression on the yellow or almost. Um, um, there's also tension here, but what we have here, the green is compression, for example. Yeah. So, and we can take a look at the equivalent uh, stress, sigma equivalent max of von Mises. So we see here the maximum value is 94, which is quite high for a regular mild seal. We have a yield stress of about 24. So there is some problem. So let's say everything with, with this um, blue color here seems to be okay. I can also show the local values here. RFM has an uh, algorithm in here that shows only selected values and not all the values. Uh, if you if you do not take care of stuff like this, you get things like um, um, uh, you get uh, results on on all uh, the values here of. Um, um, and you will not see you will not see all the all the results because you get so many values that you don't know which one are the, the the maximum or the minimum values. So if you say extreme values, it will give you a nice uh, selection. So you can control this here very nicely and smoothly with this result three. Um, okay. So it's clear that we have here a problem and we cannot say it's safe. So how to do a plastic design. Um, when we do a plastic design, we have to do a nonlinear analysis. Um, it will reduce the stiffness of individual finite, element, uh, finite elements and it will um, also therefore redistribute the forces. And um, the way how the software works, it compares the existing stress with the limit stress for the yield stress of the material and then has an algorithm in there 
that reduces the stiffness and the elasticity modulus of those elements. Because we can only reduce the stiffness of the entire finite element, um, we cannot uh, evaluate or we should not evaluate the result uh, in diff uh, as a, uh, separately in each node of the finite element. We should see it as we should average it on the uh, finite element as a constant. So, okay, what I do? Uh, first of all, we have clear. First, we have to select something and then we can edit it. Just double click on the selection and then we can create a new material. We create a new material. I pick it from the library. Uh, I can choose from my favorites, which I have already here steel and some concrete materials that I typically use. I use mild steel. And here I can choose the material model. To, uh, by default, we use isotropic linear elastic. Uh, but for this analysis, I use isotropic plastic 2D, 3D. This option you have if you have the additional module RF, MAT, and L. So with this uh, material model, I can set the yield strengths and also some strain hardening modulus. So the material uh, model will follow, will analyze the strain and then um, set the elasticity modulus according to this curve. Okay, so at the end I should not get uh, any bigger average value per finite element than 23.5. I use this material and of course I have to delete the results. So um, I can check in the view tree uh, visually because now I know it but I cannot see it. did I do everything correct but I can use the view uh, tree here to show um, surfaces uh, by material um, or you can show members by material. So um, or even a better way is to use the tables here. If I select here uh, one uh, entry in the table, the tables are also a very powerful thing in RFM, uh, the selection is synchronized. So whenever I click here, I see which one, which members use uh, steel the first material, which one used the isotropic plastic element. Huh? Okay, if I click here, everything else is disabled huh? because it, it will enable or disable the active view. I can click here, so it is disabled as well. I can only work with the material number one. Huh? So I have an option to, to check um, my uh, input visually. Okay, it's done, and I run the analysis. Uh, first of all, I, I want to do something else. I forgot something. Um, I also have now the option to, for example, change the um, thickness of an individual plate here. I can select it. Multi-selection is possible with pressing the Control or Shift key. I can rotate it. Actually, if you rotate it, you use the Alt key. Usually, usually, I, when I rotate, I can use the Control key and the wheel of the mouse, you know, and I can rotate it really nicely. Sometimes, rotation is not what I I cannot see what I want to see because the center of rotation is somewhere else. If I want to rotate about a certain node, I can use the Alt key and the wheel of the mouse, and it will rotate around the selected. Uh, node. Okay, I've lost my selection now and I have to do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the other two. So all the selected plates, I want to change thickness to 20 millimeters. Okay, okay. Also, I can play display now surfaces by geometry. 
so or by actually um, not by not by geometry by thickness you know? so I can hide and show certain uh, certain surfaces actually you know? so let me change this by material by material so if I want to see only certain my 20 millimeters so only those are active you know? okay cancel the visibility and we run the analysis now we do a plastic analysis so there will be a few more iterations you can follow the iteration process you can see how many iterations are here it's all also in a log file so you can see it in the printout report if you reach the convergence or not or how many iterations have been done you can see also a small diagram that shows you okay is there some problem if it is it moving away is it converging or not uh, everything can be recorded and printed actually afterwards we see here now the results and I'm interested especially in the surface results we see here now we have the equivalent stress 33 so it's drastically smaller but as I said before because we are reducing the stiffness only as a constant per finite element we should look at the results only um, in the distribution constant by element so if I see this then I have 23.49 as the maximum sigma equivalent von Mises we see here the red areas where we have actually the stress it's a slight bigger area than we saw beforehand where we thought there was an extra overstress this is due to the redistribution of the forces because we now have also a different stiffness through the through the plastification also I can take a look at the um, not only the stresses but also the um, strains because I have to make sure that I have not the endless strain uh, in the material the material can take only a certain uh, amount of deformation so I have also to know the strains and I see here the maximum values of the strains and it's 0.1% uh, uh, for the maximum here in the red um, also of interesting is the so-called non-linearity rate I want to see the elements that use a non-linearity that are plastifying so I can show this also uh, by this criterion if you want to have even more condensed results and the point at the points of interest you can create a mesh refinement uh, and and condense the results even even more there okay I think this is it for the first uh, example I my intention was to show you first how quickly we can model the um, transition from a 1d element into a 2d surface uh, based element uh, based model and uh, how quickly we can do a plastic design um, it will help you to do a more safe design and will uh, limit the use of material only on that location where you actually uh, need it the second example I'm going to show you now is um, maybe not so much breathtaking uh, example it's a continuous beam and uh, it consists out of three members uh, has two load or actually four load cases and several combinations uh, also I, I have a, a design case in the additional module RF Timber Pro that allows you to do a design of timber structures for beams uh, according to euro code or other codes uh, including stability and uh, capacity checks and when I take a look at it we have about uh, design maximum design ratio of 95 uh, percent 
Okay, why I'm showing you this? Well, RFM is a very powerful, large program typically used for frameworks that consist out of maybe many thousand members or many hundreds of surfaces and solids. Uh, typically, often people use uh, individual programs for this uh, type of structures that are small, that are parametric, that are uh, doing just this job and nothing else. Uh, what you have to do is you have to buy a second program, you have to work with a different vendor, you have to work in a different user environment, you have a different look and feel of the software and look and feel of your printout report. I want to show you how you can also handle and give you an idea how you can also handle such structures quickly and not only such structures, also other small problems that you have uh, inside our fan. Because this model has some intelligence inside. Um, I go to edit and edit my parameters. This model has parameters and the parameters are A, this is to span A, B is span B, C is span C. I have self weight and life load. Yeah. If I go back and go to some results, I see my loads. So now I can use those parameters and change them. Yeah. Go for example 5, uh, maybe let's have 8 at the end and a few different loads. I press apply and everything is updated. Yeah. Maybe the span at the end is too, too long. I want to have it um, maybe not 8 meters but uh, some different uh, distance. Then I can change it quickly and update um, everything. Um, okay, now there is some saving going on in the background. Just give me a second. So here we go. Uh, I can put it to 6 and update it again. Yeah? Or the load maybe to 4 and update it. Notice the value will change here. That was wrong button for update. Okay, once I have this done, I can calculate everything and everything will be updated, including my uh, concrete, uh, re uh, including my timber results, including the internal forces and everything else I have uh, prepared. The good thing about this is I have also a printout report in this parametric model. So I, I set it up once and then I change my parameters and within a few mouse clicks I have I can change it to any um, I can change it to any um, continuous beam that I want. And everything will be automatically updated. Uh, if I go to the data navigator, I can find here my printout reports and in this printout report I have a shorter and a longer edition and if I open the printout report it consists out of 11 pages which has the most important pictures and the most important tables automatically prepared and I can go and I can say few zoom um, two pages or I can see a little bit better now we can go here and look at the support reactions and pictures will be updated with the current uh, result. Also we see here shear forces, bending moment, deflections. You know? Everything you can select, all the details are here and here we have our utilization ratio. You know? So very, very quickly if I want to change it, I close it. Oh, something else is wrong. I want to do my uh, parameter, I change it and I say OK. Let's go back. C should be only 4 meters and this should be also OK. I click OK, calculate all and everything will be updated and I can take a quick look again at the printout report. It will also be updated. So very quick way to modify the structure to make things uh, parametric. Next, uh, We'll, we'll take a look how to make such a parametric uh, model and you will see uh, it's a very simple thing and you can quickly
do it also yourself and learn it yourself. Everything what you see here, all the technology is included into the main um, RFAM program, no additional module needed. So you get this when you buy RFAM, you get this parametric modeling uh, automatically with it. So uh, there's a lot of power that's extra inside RFAM that people sometimes don't even know about and um, I think this is a very, very good advantage for you working in your office. So we see now we have the updated model somewhere I think I have even dimensions and we see here there is four meters only we have your member numbering and so on. Okay um, how to create such a model? Quickly I create a new structure I want to have it in a 2D um, as a 2D model so the RFM 3D allows you to work also in a 2D environment um, and I call it one continue. Okay. I can now manually draw such continuous beams or I can use another tool, tool generate models, continuous beam. Also standard content of RFM. Um, you can set here the number of spans, you can set here the distances. I want to create load cases, self-weight, load magnitude 3 kN per meter, variable loads 5 kN per meter as a default. I want to create a cross-section so I can choose uh, here from the cross-section type rectangle and we say here 300 millimeters by 500 maybe. And also I'll choose from uh, materials that I have here um, some is already prepared here, you can change it, go wherever you want to and use whatever type of material you have. It comes all with the software. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. And additionally, I also get all the cross-section information. I can see all the stress points, everything is clear visually there, you can print all those things, you get all the details that you need uh, and not only the geometrical information. Okay, on another okay, I get here my uh, continuous beam. I hide the grid because it kind of is uh, disturbing me, I see here the loads, my load cases and so on. When I opened the structure, I decided to create um, a standard, according to standard uh, load cases. So we use here, for example, Eurocode, but we also have other codes, American codes, British codes, Chinese codes, Indian codes, and so on. And we can here then set the national annex if available, and we can automatically create combinations, load combinations. I choose this option here because that will make my life more simple. Uh, I go to the load table here and I see here that we have um, uh, our four load cases. Uh, you see here everything is also synchronized so whenever you click on it you see automatically what happens in the graphic here and you know exactly what we talk about. Uh, we can create automatically load combinations and see here the load combinations. Uh, actually I forgot to disable here some uh, combination expressions. I only want to have the combinations for ultimate limit state. So altogether we have eight combinations for example that are possible. Okay, it is created. You can do this with any other model. You don't have to do a, a continuous beam. You can, this way you can uh, manually change everything. It is uh, possible to manipulate things, you can say here, okay, I want to have it 16, no problem. But how to make it parametric? Well, first I need some parameters. Uh, if you are in the in the structure table, model, model data, you find here the button edit parameters or you find here edit parameters. So I define my first parameter and I say uh, span 1, it's of type length, it should be maybe 3 meters. 
span mid should be also of time lengths, type lengths and four meters. And span two also of type lengths five meters. Then I'd like to have a uh, load case uh, self weight. Um, this is not of type length but of type line force. By default it should be one kilonewton per meter. And live load also line force maybe by default three kilonewton per meter. Those are the parameters I want to choose from. Fine. I say okay. Now I need to change the coordinates depending on the parameter. If I want to change a coordinate, I double click on the node. Here I have the actual coordinate in X now. If I click on the right corner here with the little uh, triangle button, I get further options. And here I can edit formula. And instead of taking it from the text box here, uh, the coordinate X, I want it from the parameter span one. Double click, done. So it changes to three meters and there's a little formula sign Sing, uh, similar like it is in Excel. Okay, three meters. The next coordinate, quite simple, same way. Edit formula, span one plus mid span, seven meters. Okay, okay. The third coordinate, 16, a little bit much. Edit formula, it remembers the last input plus span two. Okay, okay, everything follows. If I want to change something now, I can test it out. Four, let's make it all even, four, apply, it works, hooray. We can also draw here some dimensions. So we see that we are doing it correctly. Okay, what is left are the loads. So. I'll choose one load case. I select my loads, double click on the loads. Here I have the same buttons, edit formula, it should be my self weight. Okay, okay. And then I go through the other load cases. Um, now I have to do it a little bit more often because I have three load cases. Live, okay, okay. One more. Uh, edit formulas, it's already there, I just have to confirm. And last one. Okay. Okay. So, and this way I'm done and I can change my parameters, see how it works. So, five, load case two, Locus 5. Okay, okay. You see here it changed because we have here in this combination we have 1.5 load case 2. So 5 times 1.5 is 2.7. If you want to see the real value, you go here and you just select the load cases without safety factors. So everything seems to seems to work and we have done our parametric model. So if I want to do this 2 and 2. Okay, done. Calculate all, everything will be analyzed and uh, calculated and updated. If I use, if I prepare my models one more time, uh, one time, I can quickly change them in the way I want them. And it's a very powerful, uh, very powerful thing. Um, in fact, uh, you do not have to do everything by yourself. When you buy Blueball software, you get a tremendous amount of already parametric sections, parametric structures with you. You can change things. You, there's, there is all kinds of uh, structures that we have here. We have space frames. We have uh, uh, global trust products, which is uh, prepared um, parts that you can buy on stock. From, from manufacturers of stage constructions, for example. So they are all, all parametric. Yeah? If you use this, we have to go back to RFM. Uh, 
I use, if I open something like this, for example, it will open in a preview. And you see here, I can change the lengths. I can even show the parameters. You know, if I change the lengths here to, you see how it will change. You know, it's all parametric and you can use these things and import them to your existing structure. So I can say, uh, I want to glue it on a node on an existing structure with some uh, spacing in between. You can set the cross sections and so on. So very powerful thing that already comes with RFAM already at no extra cost. So with a big program, we can make a very effective uh, analysis of a small problem. Um, we'll see more about the parametric modeling later. It's a very flexible way to analyze things and uh, basically you can customize RFAM with, if you want so, with individual modules uh, of generators. The next example I want to show you is about uh, intersections. Um, also a great example of how powerful um, parametric models can be. What we see here is part of a, um, could be of a larger truss. We have here pipe uh, cross section and another uh, the, the couple of struts that connect to the main uh, beam here, main pipe. And uh, it's already, it's a surface model, so it's not a beam model in this time. Um, and uh, it's connected here, so it has the in intersection line uh, exactly between where the one strut um, uh, connects to the main uh, pipe here. So this model is also parametric. I have here also parameters. I did that. There was not a lot of work. This time I can, for example, change the angles. No, I can work with uh, sinus, cosine, and so on. I can say, okay, 30 degrees. Um, I can say, uh, there's even loads here, you know, and on the other side, maybe 50 degrees. You know? So I can apply the changes, and you see how it changes. And the clue on the whole thing is that it also updates this intersection of the two uh, uh, cross sections here. You know? Also, if I if I change the diameter, actually I have to do it a little bit different. Right mouse click, uh, edit component. Uh, I if I change the pipe here, yeah, to 0.4, for example, meter. Okay, it's intelligent and it will automatically update these intersection lines. So it's a very powerful thing. It's an intelligent object. Next, I will show you how to create such an intersection. Um, I have prepared, to speed it up a little bit, a small model that only has now the center lines of those pipes. Um, how to create pipes? Well, you have to first have the center line and then you choose here from um, this button line here, pipe. Material, I chose steel again. Thickness, I set 10 millimeters wall thickness. And then I go to pipe here and I set the diameter. Um, and I can use here maybe 300 millimeters. OK. And now I can just click on the line. And automatically it will uh, create the surface here. And you have the pipe here uh, as a surface model. Uh, next, I'll do the other two pipes. Same way. This time, I only choose a little bit smaller, 1880 millimeters. This one and this one. Now I have the parent objects, I would say, the two surfaces. But I don't have yet the intersection line. How to do this? Well, quite simple. As I said at the beginning, if you don't know what to do, you use the right mouse key, right mouse key on the selection. 
I want to do something with surfaces. I want to create an intersection. Okay. And here we are, we see the intersection lines. But I want to get rid of the internal part of those struts here. So how to do that? Well, this time we work with the navigation tree on the left. We go to the data tree here. I want to do something with surfaces, so I check here surfaces. And here we see components. Well, if I click on it, uh, basically I see right away where I am at. So it's also very, very powerful, very important to see what is selected. Pipe 10, 11, 10, 12 doesn't say nothing, but if you see it in the graphic, you know exactly where you are. Okay, now I can, you see here active, I can obviously deactivate some things. This part I want, I want to weld it on the outside here of the main pipe. This one I want too, but I don't want this one. So, if you don't know what to do, right mouse click. Deactivate component. Here we go. This one I need, this one I don't need. Deactivate component. This one I need. Now I can rotate and I can look through. Everything seems to be okay. I can also take a look in here. Looks great. Okay, now we want to see how we can analyze this model. Well, I need to have some um, supports. I can apply the same principle as before and I can uh, make like an end cap on this pipe and then put a, in the center a support node. Uh, this time I select boundary lines. Again, I select rigid of surface type and because I select boundary lines and there is only one, I just have a single click to assign this surface. Okay, because now I have kind of a connection between my center node and the wall of the pipe, it's easy for me. I can here create a new nodal support. I use a new type, fixed in all directions, restrained about X. Okay, okay, and I just assign it to the individual nodes. Okay, if I want to, I can create some load cases. I'll use my self-weight. Automatically calculates the self-weight of the structure. And I run the analysis. First of all, I can't forget to check the finite element mesh. I go to my element mesh setting. Here I use maybe 100 millimeter as mesh target lengths. And we calculate and generate the finite element mesh. We can see here, uh, we'll see better when we have the results. We run the results. It's a linear analysis by default. And we get here first deformation, which is very small here and therefore not impressive. But we also get the surface internal forces. We can again display the stresses. And we see here where we have the problematic uh, zones. And everything can be analyzed again as before. So, very powerful thing. I do not do the parametrization here. We have seen that before. Uh, important is to know, okay, we can do those intersections. It only does not only work with, with pipes. You can intersect any free form shape with another one. Um, if you change any of the parent objects, the child objects will follow, the components will follow and you don't have to recalculate your meshing and everything. Everything will be automatic. So very intelligent opti uh, object and very simple to handle and very flexible. Next example. Um, next example is a typical engineering problem where we have to deal with uh, singularities. Uh, this time we deal with concrete. So I'm looking at um, this model here now, which is a simple plate made from, this time from concrete, um, thickness 200 millimeters. Um, and I have here some point supports at different, uh, in a different um, distance, grid 
uh, arranged, kind of. And when I run, I have a couple of load cases again. Doesn't have to be many. It just needs to be showing the principal work with it. So there's self-weight and there is a live load. And I have a few combinations, this time linear, ultimate limit state uh, results are, for example, um, we can see here the mx value, my value, and so on. Or we can take a look at the deformations. OK. Um, what I like to point out is a typical problem, which is uh, which are singularities. And if I take a look at the maybe equivalent stress or um, forces, then you see here everything. There's high concentrations of stresses actually here on those points. So first of all, how to find singular points, how to find problematic points. Well, uh, typically, uh, it's locations where there are high stress gradients. So if you have a, if you make the mesh dense, you will get an infinitive high value, and it's very steep. You will have a very steep angle, the the, the change from the from one uh, finite element to the other one. I can show you this. Uh, for example, if I make a section, a longitudinal section. Let me do this first. Create a new longitudinal section, and we do this from here to here. And we see here now the results. Um, we, we see here a result diagram, which is also a very, very powerful feature in RFM. Um, you can choose which type of result you want to see. For example, bending moment in one in the other direction. You can also choose your load case you want to see. Yeah. So we see here very steep increase at the points of the supports. And these are problems with the value you can rise, you can increase it if you make a more dense mesh. And if you do the design here, you'll get a very high value of, um, of internal, uh, of reinforcement. Let me save this. I call it mid. OK. OK. Uh, you can see here the values are, uh, you can see the, the results here on this section in, in the center here. Um, I'll make it a little bit nicer for you. In the display navigation navigator, you have the option to set all the settings for the for the results here. And I want to see not differences. I want to see isobands and not those values. Here we go. So you can see here, and maybe we choose one combination. You can see here the peak values, for example, of the result I'm selecting here, sigma x or uh, mx, for example. Um, you can see that here. OK. Um, how to find, sometimes it's not clear where there's a singularity. How to find it? Well, you first have to select a, a stress as a result. Let's go to sigma equivalent. And then I can show the differences, which is basically the stre stress gradient. And it will visualize me where we have a very high gradient. So. Um, the stress gradient, where it is red, is 60%. So the increase from one element to the other one is 60%. So it's a very it's a location where there is a lot of increase in these values, where we have those peaks. And those are typically the problematic places. Here it's clear because it's a point supported slab. And where the point supports are located, you see the singularities. But in other structures, it's not so clear. But you can find it in this way. OK, how to handle those things? I go back to isobands, and I change it to mx, maybe. Um, how to handle those situations? Now, how to handle singularities? There are two ways, and I'm going to show you 
uh, the two options we have. First of all, uh, we can do following. We can select one node here and I create a new support type. Here I create a, an elastic support, so everything which is rigid is not good. So if it's elastic, it's better. But how to find out the elasticity of such a support? RFAM has a tool that allows you to calculate such uh, stiffness from the geometry of a column. So we have, for example, a circular type, diameter 500 millimeters, um, lengths 5 meters. We can choose the material and we see automatically the spring constants for this uh, column. Uh, we have the option to have elastic surface foundation, so the model internally will be an elastic supported surface. We can have an elastic node, so it's a point support but a spring constant underneath, or we have a node with adapted finite element mesh, so it will also kind of narrow down the result around the column with the finite element mesh uh, change. I stay with the first option because I think it's the most effective one. But it's up to you what you choose. I click OK and OK again. Of course, we need to delete the results. And we see here we have one area here where we have a different uh, support symbol. I'll run the analysis. And we'll see the difference. First of all, the results are hidden inside the column because we assume inside the columns those really those results are not uh, so relevant. Uh, often it's standard practice that you make the design at the edge of the column. So we get the values uh, at the edge uh, of the column. Um, also, um, also we can compare, for example, I have made here, I didn't explain to you, we have here a concrete surface case. So we did actually a design for concrete, which is here in the module, RF concrete surfaces that um, analyzes the structure according, for example, Euro code. And I get a reinforcement uh, for this structure. If I do this, I can look at it graphically. I can see here RF concrete surfaces and I get a result and I hide the, the other values. I get a result value of 38%, 38 um, centimeters square by meter on this peak and 22 only on this peak. So you see with the modified uh, support, I reduce uh, the result in the needed reinforcement dramatically. So this is one way how we can uh, handle this problem. Um, next way how to handle this problem is uh, called average region. In RFM5, this is a new feature, I can enter here average regions. If I create a new average region, I have to um, enter a name. I have to select a surface where I want to use the averaging region. I can select whether it should be a rectangle, a circle, or an ellipse. I stick with a rectangle, uh, with a circle, and I'll place it right above the support. The dimension, I'll choose about 2 to 2.5 times the thickness. So we have uh, 200 millimeters, maybe three times. So it's 0.6 meters as an averaging uh, area around uh, the column. I will average in both directions. I click OK. and We'll now uh, run the analysis again. You see, we 
we had something like 36 square centimeters or 38. Now we have only 30. And um, I'll have to explain a little bit more because I have to go into the, the other direction. So th th this is reinforcement in direction one, reinforcement in direction two. You see here there's the average impact. Uh, basically, I can show and hide um, the averaged results. Maybe if I go back to the, to the combination. Uh, hang on combination this way, data, results, uh, sigma x averaging out, okay, uh, sorry, okay, one more time, um, calculate all, Okay, this is something I didn't want to see now. Okay, um, I'll need some more so stresses, bending moments. So let's see what happens now. Where are my averages? Surface diagrams. Uh, ba -ba 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 sections. One more time. These bands are here. Averaging. Averaging display. Here we go. Average region in and out. So now let's see the result one more time in the sections. Display sections. All values. Sections. Here we go. Okay. And if I show the average region, I need. Uh, there is no difference now because I need to average in the different direction. Okay, um, I'll show you one more thing uh, regarding the result uh, diagrams. Those are also objects that I can, and we come back to the averaging after that, that I can move and copy. I press the left mouse key, control key, and left mouse key, wait a little bit, it will copy it, and then I can drag and drop it to the location I want it. So, for example, here. Uh, same thing, I can create a new average region on the other direction, uh, a new uh, uh, result diagram in the other direction. You see here uh, the result course again. I save it and I call it in this case A. Okay. Okay. And it's in the other direction. Again, I'll copy it a few times. Um, from one location, first select it and then copy it from here to here. Uh, something didn't work. Sometimes if you have trouble, you can also do it this way. You select it, you say copy, one copy, and you copy it from here to here, for example, okay, it's an object like anything else. Yeah, you can copy it from one option from one end to the other one. Also, now I try it again one more time. Copy and I move it to here, for example. Huh? You can edit it. You can say it should be at uh, five point five meter. Okay, and it will be exactly where you want it. Yeah? So actually what I wanted to see here is this result. I'll go back to zero and now we we show the average region again. Um, Self-weight, uh, let's go to the concrete results. In concrete itself you have to select um, also in the details that you want to design the average internal forces. It's the sign is here. Huh? Okay. And I run the analysis again. 
So I use the smoothed results and then I should be able to display them here. Uh, results, I need now isobands and uh, I did something wrong now. Here we go. Um, now we see here the averaged results in RF concrete. So from 38 to 27, we have a tremendous reduction of the average result. Um, and also it's a good thing how to, to, um, to make a documentation with this uh, design uh, sections, with this result sections. Um, let me copy one more time from here to here. One more, maybe also here. Uh, go to here. Okay. So instead of displaying the entire um, forces, you can uh, also use this display um, as a as a good way to display the results. Yeah? For example, I go back to self weight. Yeah? Um, you can use this, or you can use uh, isobands, or you can also use only uh, use show nothing and use only the sections. Yeah? I can hide the grid, and this way I have also a nice way how to get the documentation of the results. So I print the graphic, for example, as a mass print into the printout report. And I can select, I want this result, this view for all those results, MX and Y and so on, for all load cases. Okay, 50% of the page should be used for one graphic and I will open the printout report after that. Um, I'll open a new printout report and it will give me uh, the results. Nicely prepared with a nice uh, set of graphics that I can look at and uh, two graphics on one page. Takes some time to update the pictures but now you can see how nicely everything is there and you get all the peak values correctly and uh, not all, uh, not everything is just written above each other. So it's really, really uh, nicely prepared, automatically prepared. Also a feature that saves you a lot of time um, when working with it. I accidentally put here a dimension, I can delete it, for example, it will be gone then also from the printout report. Everything is updated automatically. Okay, this was how to work with result diagrams, how to use them for printing, how to handle singularities with the uh, column feature as the point support and with the average region that I've been showing uh, to you. Yeah? Um, next, I'd like to show a few more things regarding tracking of problems. I have prepared another model. Um, again, it's parametric. And this model is a steel hall. Uh, I've made it completely parametric. You can edit the parameters here and you can say, okay, spacing six meters should be seven, five meter 80 should be six. The angle of the roof should be 20 and I can update the view. Everything is parametric. Since we have load generators for snow load and self-weight, snow load, wind load, for example, uh, and they are following the structure, uh, we have here uh, a really uh, parametric model. So if I change the spacing to six meters, for example, and I say apply, you see how the load will change also because it follows uh, the geometry. So very, very powerful tool. 
Okay, I run the analysis here. I have five, six load cases, also including imperfections like drift and camber. And I'll run the combination 16, which is uh, self-weight snow and an imperfection, and I run the analysis. When I do this, sometimes if you work with uh, finite elements, you see that there are problems with stability. It's a nonlinear analysis, theory second order. We check also stability. And I get a warning that something went wrong, but I don't know what is wrong. There is an instability in here, but I don't know where the problem is. So how to find it? Well, uh, I can try to run a load case on a smaller load level, for example, self-weight. Yeah? If it is a stability problem, I can use, for example, I can start with a linear analysis. And basically, or typically in our software, load cases are uh, linear. You can set it up as you like, but by default, we run them as linear. So you can set it up, load case one, calculation parameter, geometrically linear. Okay, so the model is connected, it works fine, it's there, but it's a stability problem. It's second order theory. Uh, gives me an error. So how to find it? You can use the additional module RF stability for this. And I start it and I analyze the uh, an eigenvalue. I analyze um, the uh, based on the locus one, uh, the eigenmode of this structure. I import the sub, uh, the actual forces of low case one into this eigenvalue solver. I run the analysis of four eigenvalues. And I get a critical load factor, which is the factor that I can apply to this load case. That was the basic of my analysis. And I can basically linearly extrapolate it three times one, six, nine times the load on this uh, structure that I have now in order to be stable. This is one number that shows me how far I am away from instability, from the point of instability. But I still don't know w what's the problem. Huh? So for this, I have to look at my uh, shape eigenvector mode. And you see here, there is some column that's pending. For the first eigenvector, second eigenvector, it's also here on the other side. And the third mode is here. The fourth mode is here. So this is most likely where I have a problem because to this critical load factor, this mode uh, belongs. OK, what I'll do now is I'll select, I go to the cross sections here, and I have a list of cross sections, and I select one of these members columns that bends, and I see when I go here, I use my synchronization, I see all those failing members are made from the same cross section. If I change the cross section to 200, then I want to see the effect of the uh, to the critical load factor to it. I run the analysis again because now this first failing mode is should not appear anymore because I made the cross section bigger. So what we see now we see a much higher eigen vector, a much much higher critical load factor, and we see also a different failing mode. So now if something fails, it goes this direction at a uh, load factor of 28. Then we have the other load, critical load factor is the typical buckling mode of the frames. And the third one, now here we have this column. So at 31, so before it was some 10 times higher uh, load factor now by increasing those uh, columns. And now I can try if I can do also my second order analysis. So I run this load case. 16 and get my results and now there should be no more problem. So by using 
this stability module, I can find the problem, the location of my problem. If I get a stability message inside the software, I typically do not know where the problem is, but with the use of this Eigen mode and the RF stability module, I can find this and it can tell me more about the stiffness distribution in this structure. Okay, another final small um, example I have here with the um, bum, bum, bum. let me see uh, plausibility check. I started with a small example. I will end with a small example. Again, we have this looks like the same frame like we had at the beginning. Uh, everything looks just fine. I have a self-weight load case here. I run the analysis and I have a problem. The stiffness matrix is singular, structure is instable. Well, the good thing about it is RFM tells me with an arrow where maybe the problem is and I can go and look. It's, it's one good thing. I already get the degree of freedom, direction X and the node, the finite element node. So here. Uh, but I don't see anything, looks still okay. Uh, what's the problem? Uh? For this, I can use the plausibility check or the model check. And I have a feature, have several features here. And one is to find identical nodes. And here I can set a tolerance where I find identical nodes. So if there are nodes that are close, lying close together, that can cause a problem in meshing or uh, maybe maybe I'm not aware that there are two nodes that are close together, I can find it. In order to find the problem here, I change the tolerance to five millimeters. And I check it now and now I see there are groups of identical nodes. And I can now do nothing with it or I can say, please create visibility of each group. So the selection here, those nodes will be put into a certain visibility. Two new visibilities have been created. I go to Fuse, Visibilities. So now I can select nodes 4 and 7, which are here. And I see if I press isometric view, I see that there is a big difference. Now it is uh, uh, um, a change to visibility. Okay, and you can see here is the problem. Um, in here, so I have to go down closer and I see here now there is a problem. We have the coordinates, we have one millimeter of difference. And the same is on the other, other end of the structure where we have here the same problem. Okay, how to solve it? I can either drag and drop the node also not every software can just drag and drop such a uh, node and connect it this way. Or I can use again the tool um, model check identical nodes. Check again. And here I can use unite nodes, supports and delete unused nodes. So if I check this option, I click apply, you watch here. Um, You'll we'll see how it connects automatically. So RFM saves you a lot of time in finding those modeling errors that can occur, for example, when you import from a not so perfect DXF file or when you're just modeling rapidly and you have a big model and you have to find those little problems. You have tools that help you find uh, those things. Okay. This is what I wanted uh, to show you today in this webinar. Um, we've seen the rapid generation of FEM models from 1D beams. Uh, this way you can handle steel details in a very fast way and very effective. You can solve problem zones where beams are not uh, enough. Uh, we also seen parametric modeling, how to model uh, simple structures and parameterize them. Um, it's a great way 
for fast and flexible reaction to changes. Uh, you save uh, in uh, buying other software because you also can handle big and small problems inside RFAM. And you have an all-in-one solution uh, because you use one software for all your problems. Also, we saw how to create intersections and how intelligent, uh, intelligent those objects are. With, um, they, they change intelligently after you uh, change the parent object. Um, we also learned how to handle uh, uh, singularities. We have um, seen that RFAM is not a scientific program but uh, covers the problems of daily engineering work and it uses the tools and the methods that typically are used by engineers and it helps you to get practical solutions. Uh, result diagrams are also a good way to show the result and present the result in your printout report. Um, RFAM um, is not a scientific software. It, it has a lot of powerful solvers and scientific uh, solutions inside, but it's uh, made for engineers and for daily practice work in, in for engineers and not so much for, for the scientific use. So therefore it includes all those things that we have seen here and uh, I think it will increase the productivity of working, of solving your, your engineering problems and rather than to dealing with uh, facts like modeling and how to get coordinates of meshes and so on. RFAM can really help you uh, with this. Okay. Um, before we uh, end this webinar, I'd like to point out uh, our website. Uh, we have here uh, options to look at videos and to apply for newsletters. Uh, you can visit us at certain events and conferences. You find this all on our website. Um, we have here also the links to follow us on our social media channels. I'd like to point out especially the blog where you find daily messages that we post here and um, we can search here um, inside the blog and here you find for example also a short a hint how to create an intersection. You can read about this. So it's a good source of in information. Uh, most important is the trial version of RFAM that you can download here. Uh, it's a 30-day fully functional trial version. Um, please take a look at it. We have also a special page for beginners where it has information where to find introductory examples, where to find tutorials, and how to get help uh, uh, with learning RFAM. I think it's very uh, little time you have to invest to get started with RFAM. I would say if you take a couple of hours you will have your first results and uh, you can basically install and uh, start to work with it. There is not a lot of training uh, required for uh, RFAM. This is one of our most important advantages, I would say, the user friendliness, the easy to learn uh, software. Um, before we end the webinar, I'd like to thank Frank Sontag for answering the questions. Um, I hope everything has been answered to your uh, um, pleasure and everything is, is clear. If you have any more questions, do not hesitate to contact us. Send us an email at info at uh, We gladly answer your questions also the next days and later. Um, I'd like to point out the next webinar that's on our calendar on September 19th. We will handle RFAM and BIM integration with Tecla structures. Uh, you can register at the website 
uh, blueball.com webinars, ASPX, uh, and you find here also, because it's always a question, you find here also uh, the previous webinars and the recordings. You can watch with your credentials, you can watch the webinar again. There are several webinars also from last year that you can watch here. And you find all the, uh, the upcoming webinars on this page. Uh, we have different webinars for Germany and for in, in different languages, in German and in English, and we will also provide more languages in future. Please go to the uh, page with your preferred language and you can follow us. Thank you for your time today and also thanks again to Frank Sontag for answering the questions. Thank you for participating. I'll Hope it was um, good invested time for you and I would be very happy if I could uh, see you again on one of our future webinars. Bye-bye.